So you want to become fluent in 2024, but there are hundreds of language apps, books, and videos out there all telling you different things, and you just want to know what actually works to learn another language as effectively as possible. Well, I went from knowing zero Spanish to becoming fluent and passing the C2 Spanish mastery exam last year. And along the way, I tried dozens and dozens of different language learning methods, some of which were helpful, while others were a complete waste of time. And in this video, I'll share and rank 24 methods that I've personally tried to help you find a language approach that's easy, affordable, and actually works to help you become fluent this year. And by the end of this video, you should have a solid idea which methods are worth your time and which ones you should just ignore. Let's start with Duolingo. Duolingo is an extremely popular language app that gamifies learning a new language with lessons that include activities like fill in the blanks and language quizzes. It gets a four on cost because Duolingo lessons are free, but some features like conversation practice and detailed explanations are paid only. Duolingo also gets a five on ease because it's dead simple simple to set up and use. The app is mobile and desktop friendly, extremely easy to use, and lets you turn any dead moment into a quick language lesson. But for effectiveness, Duolingo gets a 2.5. I just don't think it introduces you to enough volume of phrases and grammar to become fluent, which I'll define as C1, C2 for this video, where you can talk about almost anything and live and work in the language with ease. Duolingo will get you from zero to about B2, which is intermediate where you can have simple conversations. But that's if you finish everything, which takes some time. So the pace is just just too slow for me, D tier. Netflix shows introduce you to an insane number of new words and phrases every minute. Using Netflix to learn languages is also extremely easy to set up. You just need to get a Netflix account, look up shows in the language you're learning, and flip on subtitles in that target language. So it's a five for ease, but it will cost you a monthly subscription, so Netflix gets a three on cost. For effectiveness, Netflix will indeed throw a lot of new phrases at you, but we can't give it more than a three because it's not very beginner friendly. You'll likely need to be intermediate or advanced to keep up with most shows and not get get frustrated and pause every two seconds. And while you get vocabulary, you won't really get grammar or speaking practice from using Netflix. C tier. But language immersion, where you travel to another country to live, work, and socialize entirely in the target language, will sharpen your entire language toolkit, including vocabulary, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. I think the hype around in-country language immersion is real, and this is a five for effectiveness in my book. Getting to spend a few months in Spain was a rocket ship for my Spanish in every way, and it did wonders for both my raw Spanish skills and my confidence in the language. If you do this right, I think immersion can take you from zero to fully fluent really quickly. But the drawback is cost. Buying flights and paying for living arrangements for months in a new country is not something most people can easily do, so this gets a one. And we have to give it a one for ease too. All the work needed to get visas, organize living arrangements, or find a good option that does these for you makes this a hard option to set up for most people. And ST. A much easier option would be to try learning a language by listening to music. This can be fully free if you find music online, so it's a five on cost. And since music in most languages is just a search away these days, this also gets a five for ease, but music for language learning suffers from similar challenges to Netflix and it doesn't have the visual element. It's too hard for most beginners to do it without getting frustrated and looking up every word, especially because music is more poetic at times and this method doesn't explicitly teach writing or grammar. So this gets a two. D tier. Now, if you do a quick YouTube search for how to learn Spanish, you'll see a bunch of videos promoting that you can become fluent by listening to Spanish in your sleep. This would get a five for cost if a free playlist could teach you Spanish while you snooze away. But while this is popular, it gets a one for effectiveness because you are not likely to learn any new material with this technique. It can technically improve your language retention if you do it like we covered in the video, but this is very tricky and I don't recommend it. So for ease, it gets a two because it's not simple to do without hurting your sleep and risking your health. F tier. A much better recommendation than sleep language learning is taking online language lessons using apps like italki or Lingoda. These apps will connect you to real language teachers that are trained to teach students, so this can actually take you from zero to fluent. But you have to be diligent to take classes consistently, and you need to select a good teacher. Otherwise, this becomes a lot slower. Because it varies depending on the teacher, this method gets a four for effectiveness. The bad part is that it can be costly to do it often. Five one hour long lessons per week for $10 each would cost you about $200 a month, so I'd give this method a two on cost. As for ease, while language apps like italki help you find teachers, you need to do some work yourself to select the right teacher for you. You have to constantly handle scheduling and you need to set time aside to do the live classes and the homework you might get. So this gets a three for ease, B tier. A much less costly option than paid language lessons is to get a language exchange partner instead. This is a five for cost since it's free, but it's a two for ease because while apps like Tandem and HelloTalk will introduce you to lots of potential language exchange partners, 
partners, you'll have to talk to many people to find the right person, and scheduling is also a hassle since these are not professionals and sometimes people just get tired and quit. And we can't give this method more than a 3 for effectiveness because while language exchange partners are natives, they're not language teachers. They might not teach you well and you'll have to spend about half the time teaching them your language which can slow you down. C tier. But there is a method that will just focus on your learning, and I can't ignore it because this is how many of us started learning our first foreign language. School. While you'll hear many people complaining about school for language learning, I actually think that most schools can give you a solid start in a new language. But school tends to focus on a more academic register and often misses teaching how real natives speak, and it's also limited to just a few classes a week which can slow you down, so I give this a 3.5 for effectiveness. Cost is tricky, but we'll say 3 since school is technically free but paid for with taxes. And it gets a 3 for ease since it takes work to go to classes, finish the coursework, and plan for exams, but the curriculum is already made for you and you just need to show up and do the work. C tier. If you've ever said to yourself, there's so much to learn to become fluent and I have no idea where to start, you might be a big fan of language exams. Take Spanish for example. It has a language exam called DELE that goes from A1 all the way to C2. And that means you can go on full autopilot and just study to pass each test with the practice materials and you'd have a very high level of Spanish by the time you knocked out the C2. So this gets a 4.5 for effectiveness. And because the curriculum is already pre-built for you, this method is pretty simple to follow. You'll just need to to buy the exam practice books to dive in. But you'll also want to find a teacher for some parts like grading the writing and speaking, so this extra setup puts language exams at a 3 for ease. We'll also give them a 3 for cost because books, exam fees, and the handful of sessions with a teacher can be expensive, but you could skip paying for the actual tests and just do mock exams. A tier. An easier and free language method would be language podcasts. Fire up your favorite episode, listen while doing the dishes or going on a run, then review the vocabulary and grammar you just learned, and repeat. It sounds simple because it is. It gets a 5 for ease. Cost should be cheap since podcast apps like Spotify are free with ads, so it's a 5 on cost too. For effectiveness, I generally think language podcasts are a bit more effective than Netflix. While shows move really fast and leave beginners behind, podcasts are often tailored for different levels so beginners can jump on these too. But Podcasts don't really help you practice speaking and writing, so we'll give them a 3.5. C tier. If you're still thinking about Netflix for language learning, there's actually a really nice way to upgrade Netflix and make it more effective using a tool called Language Reactor. It lets you save vocabulary flashcards, get translations, and pause to turn any moment of a show into a mini language lesson. Language Reactor gives a nice bump to Netflix's effectiveness, but we'll keep it at a 3.5 since you'll still need to use other methods to practice speaking and writing. It gets a 3 on cost since Language Reactor is free but has some paid parts, and a 3 for ease since it's desktop only and has a learning curve. C tier. While we're still in the realm of media, we should talk about YouTube. And you can surprisingly learn a wide range of vocabulary, grammar, and language concepts from YouTube teachers. Then you can supplement with native content or learn about tools and tips for language learning from channels like this one. I actually think that YouTube is really powerful and can take you from zero to near fluent from the hundreds of hours of YouTube Spanish I've personally watched, so it's a 4 for me for effectiveness. But the tough part is ease. You'll need to find the right channels, much like finding the right teachers, and you'll have to pick a video here, add a video there, and basically build your own curriculum using many videos. So this is not simple and I have to give it a 2. But YouTube is free so it gets a 5 on cost. B tier. If you don't want to deal with building your own curriculum, you can turn to the top rated textbooks and workbooks for your target language as your primary learning method. The author should have already organized the content into a mini curriculum for you, so it should be simple to go through the book from start to finish and we'll give it a 4 for ease. A strong textbook should also walk you through all the language concepts from beginner to advanced, and I relied on these a lot especially when I was just starting Spanish. But the lack of audio with books means that pronunciation and speaking will likely need to come from somewhere else, so this bumps books down to a 3.5 for effectiveness. As for cost, we'll say 3 since the price of books can vary drastically. C tier. For people looking for a more fun and gamified way to learn languages, video games are actually solid contenders as language teachers. I personally learned a ton of my English by playing MMORPGs and video games after I first moved to the US, so I think games can take you pretty far, and I consider them a better version of Netflix where you get to interact with the language concepts you learn rather than just passively watch. Games get a 3.5 in effectiveness for me. We'll also give them a 4 for cost because while some games are expensive, Many of them are free online, but games are a bit indirect. They work because you focus on the game and the language learning almost happens as a side effect, so this might feel tricky for someone who's focused primarily on the language and not on gaming. 2.5 for ease. C tier. 
But an even more unconventional method than gaming is starting a YouTube channel to learn a language. This might seem like a head scratcher, but I actually started this YouTube channel as a way to stay accountable to learning Spanish. I knew that doing it publicly would prevent me from quitting, give me a way to teach what I was learning to other people to reinforce my knowledge, and provide a great excuse for me to talk to many native speakers. I'll give this an honorary three because by itself it won't teach you Spanish, but this can be a good accountability method for you if you're like me. And we'll give it a one for ease since running a YouTube channel is a lot of work. But the cost is three since you can choose to spend or not spend money. C tier. Now this is my favorite category, using technology of the future to hack language learning and become fluent faster. Chat GPT conversations. I'm extremely bullish that Chat GPT will become an incredibly useful tool for language learners. I've used Chat GPT to practice writing, reading, listening, and now speaking at a beginner, intermediate, and even advanced professor level. And I think that AI will be an easy five for effectiveness, but I'll give it a 4.5 for now because we're still waiting on the last bits of improvement for awesome pronunciation and no hallucination errors in some languages. Cost is a four since a lot of AI is actually free even while some features are paid. The main drawback is that AI is still a bit complicated for most people. You have to learn prompting and figure out how to use the platforms. So that's why I make all these videos to break it down for language learners. Without this, it's a two for ease. A tier. But custom GPTs might change all of that. It's now possible to train your own version of chat GPT to practice languages without ever knowing a single prompt. You'll be able to just download language AIs, like these ones I made for conversation practice and language games, and jump straight into language practice without any extra work. This bumps custom GPTs to a four for ease since it takes the guesswork of prompting away. And they're better than normal chat GPT, but we'll keep a 4.5 for effectiveness because of the same pronunciation note. As for cost, we'll need to see where this goes since custom GPTs are still new, but we're at a three today since they currently require a paid ChatGPT Plus subscription. A tier. While we're on AI for language learning, we should mention Bing AI since it's an alternative to ChatGPT. It gets a four on cost for having fewer paywalls than ChatGPT, and it performs very similarly so it keeps a four for effectiveness. But it's clunkier to use for language learning and voice conversations because of its design, so we'll give it a two for ease. B tier. But there's one more major AI player I tried, Google Bard. Bard jumps to 4.5 for cost since it's almost entirely free, and the quality of answers competes with ChatGPT, so it's a 4 for effectiveness. But it's a bit frustrating that it doesn't always follow structured conversations, so it gets a 1.5 for ease, but I do think this will improve in the coming weeks with a Gemini launch. B tier. For now, there's another technology that I think will radically change language learning very soon. Virtual reality. And Immerse VR is one of the best examples today. They have real human teachers giving language lessons in virtual reality to help learners practice languages in immersive environments without fear of making mistakes. And Immerse is meant mainly for beginner to intermediate students, but I still find myself learning advanced Spanish from Immerse classes today. I give it a four for effectiveness. Immerse is also really cool because it's not just on VR. You can also use it on your desktop computer too so we'll give it a three for ease. But Immerse is subscription only, so it gets a two for cost. B tier. A cheaper VR alternative is Mondly, which lets you practice pre-recorded conversations and learn vocabulary in virtual reality. It's paid, but it's a one-time payment, so 2.5 for cost. And it's sadly only available with a VR headset, so two for ease. While I do think Mondly will help you improve your vocabulary and conversation skills, it's not nearly as complete as having language teachers in Immerse, so it's a three for me. C tier. If cost is a big factor for you, Language Lab gets a five here for being a free VR language app, while keeping a two for ease since it's VR only, but it also has very limited content, so I give it a 1.5 for effectiveness. E tier. A much more content-rich VR language app is Nowntown, which turns language learning into a big, immersive world video game. It covers lots of vocabulary and a decent amount of speaking practice, so I think a diligent Nowntown student can get to intermediate level, and I give it a three for effectiveness. It keeps a two for ease since it's VR only, and cost is 2.5 for the one-time payment to buy the app. C tier. If you don't have a VR headset but want to try immersive learning, there's another app called Immerse Me with similar pre-recorded conversations to Modly, but it uses real world locations and people. It's similar to Modly's effectiveness with a solid three, but it's accessible on VR, desktop, and mobile, so it gets a four for ease. On the con, it can be quite expensive, so a one for cost. C tier. Now what's the verdict? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? What is the best language learning method today? Well, it depends on what you're optimizing for. If you just want to learn as fast as possible, go through all the methods that had an effectiveness of five and 4.5 first, and evaluate whether any of those are possible for you before moving down the list. If cost is a limiting factor, try filtering to three or more stars for cost, or just start with some methods that personally excite you and move through the list. To see everything I personally did to go from zero to fluent in Spanish, Check out this video where I shared my full story in detail so you can learn from my mistakes. I'll see you there and hasta la próxima.